I guess I have to start in verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So let's pray before we get too far in here. Lord, I want to thank you for um, this amazing group of Christian ladies here and um, the hearts that they have for you and giving of their time to come to an event that's focused on you and fellowship around your word and help us to learn from the messages and please give me clarity of mind as I try to share things that you've been showing me and um, just bless every one of the, the dear ladies here. Amen. Uh, okay, the, the first thing I want to say at the beginning of this um, is that a woman's ministry is going to look very different depending on where she is in her life. So, you know, a young girl who's still at home, her ministry will look different than the mother of young children. Um, someone who has mostly grown children, her ministry is going to look different than a single woman and uh, a woman whose children are all grown and on their own. Their ministry will still be different yet. Um, and obviously each individual will have their own ministry. So I don't want you to hear um, some of the things that I'm going to talk about and feel like, oh, I can't do all that. Or, you know, all I can do right now is barely keep my house clean. <laughs> or I can't even do that. Um, so just don't, don't feel like looking at this, that you have to do it all today or, you know, in this season of life. Um, so in America, a lot of the tasks that used to be done by family members, um, by the body of Christ, and even just by our communities, we've, as a society, institutionalized those. We expect, you know, the daycares to take care of our children. Um, we expect um, the, the care of the elderly. That's now, you know, that's the nursing home's job. Um, postpartum doulas, you know, that never even used to be a thing. That was something that the society did. They took care of their own people. We didn't have to go hire somebody um, to take care of a new mom and her baby. Helping widows, helping other people during difficult times. Other things that are just completely forgotten or neglected. So I want to just cover some of those things that uh, God talks about and then different things that I've seen um, over time watching different, different people and different families and the ministries that they've had. Um, so then I want to go to Titus again, chapter 3, verse 8. And this is a faithful saying, And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men. I mean, unto men, sorry. <laughs> and then one of the questions I want to ask you guys is, why do we do things God's way? So if somebody can, or all of you, can start giving me some reasons um, in general, but also if you have a verse to go with it, of why. Why should we do things that God tells us to do in his word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. To set an example. That's good. Mm hmm A um, couple other things I had. One was in Titus 5.13, to not to give the adversary occasion to speak reproachfully. Um, and then Romans 12, 1 and 2, it is what kind of service? It is our reasonable service. Um, it is good and profitable to all men. In Titus 3.8, that we be not unfruitful. In Titus 3.14, it is the becoming thing. It is right for us to do in 1 Timothy 3.10. And Colossians 1, 10, and 11, it's to, we're to walk worthy of that vocation wherewith we are called. In Matthew 5.16, it is done to glorify our Father. So now that we have our why, let's look at some of the what. Um, does anybody want to read 1 Timothy 5? 5 through 15. This is a verse that somebody 
read, or some of these verses someone read earlier this week. Sure, that would be great. 1 Timothy 5, 5 through 15. Now she that is a widow indeed, that she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. If, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, faith and is worth, worse than an infidel. Let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works. For if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she hath relieved the afflicted, if she hath diligently followed every good work. But the younger w- widows refuse, for when they have begun to act wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, not only idle, but tattlers also and busy- busybodies, speaking these things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to kind of break that down in a little bit, but I also want to read um, some in Romans 12 also, kind of just gathering some points here, and then we'll break them all down. I was trying to pick out the verses in, in chapter 12, and I was like, I think we just have to read the whole thing, (laughs) or at least most of it. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. And helping one another in that way, like they were talking about. I can't remember which preacher that was, but I thought he described it well. Um, it was my dad. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I couldn't just pick a few out of there. <laughs> um, so the first one that um, kind of stood out there is in verse 13, of distributing to the necessity of the saints. And this can cover a whole host of um, host of topics, but Um, And then also a similar one is in Galatians 6, 2, of bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And in 1 Timothy 5, verse 10, that we read earlier about relieving the afflicted. 
So kind of <laughs> something that I would say is just look around and if you see a need, try to fill that need if it's within your power. Um, if somebody's struggling with something, find a way to help them. And a lot of times, don't ask them, is there something I can do for you? <laughs> Think of something you can do for them and ask them, can I do this for you? Because a lot of times when people, especially if they're suffering or going through a hard time, they can't think of something. They just need you to help them. Um, and also, some people never will ask, or they don't want to accept help, or don't want to tell you that they need help. <laughs> so, um, a few ways that I've witnessed different different saints ministering to people. Um, one example that I've just seen a lot lately is people helping the elderly. Um, like for example, my my mother-in-law goes and helps take care of. Um, her mother-in-law, I guess that would be. Anyway, uh, my husband's grandma, who's 97, and she lives in a assisted living home, and they don't really take good care of her, so she's there every day for two hours a day, feeding her, making sure she got food, you know, trying to make sure, kind of doing the job of the people there, but, you know, just little things of, you know, trimming her fingernails, because nobody pays attention to it, and stuff, and those kind of acts of service and they go on unnoticed you know people don't think oh she's a missionary or oh she does this or that it's something that nobody notices and I know you with your your dad too you know and your mom and just I see that with a lot of ladies that well and men too but it tends to fall to the women um you know and it means so much to them and to those of us that see you doing that too it's it's a blessing um Another way is new mothers. You know, there are people that either have their first child or, well, no matter what child it is, <laughs> you need help after that baby's born. Um, and there's so many ways you can help. What have some of you guys seen as ways to help a new mom? Bring them food. <laughs> yes. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and some of these things, they kind of apply to, to uh, several of these categories. Like another one I have is sick people, um, people that are sick, whether that's just they have the flu or they have a chronic illness, something like that. Those same kind of things go, you know, to just, if you know somebody who's struggling with a health issue and you just show up and drop them off a meal, it means the world to them that somebody cares, that somebody is willing to help them in that way or like you said, grocery shopping, um, cleaning their house, anything. Um, another one is assisting widows or otherwise single mothers. Um, if you think about it, if you, especially if you have children or young children at home and you don't have a husband, whether he died or there was a divorce or for whatever reason it was a single mom, she is gonna have a lot harder time caring for her children in the way that she would like to and still providing physically for them, monetarily and all that. Um, so like I know young moms who've had to put their child in public school or Christian school because they couldn't homeschool because they had to work so that they could have a home, <laughs> you know? Um, and so like that would be a prime example of a place that a single girl could get good experience and minister to somebody because you could learn yourself how to teach a kid before it's all on your lap to do your own kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get some practice on somebody else's kids. But anyway, um, and then, you know, different things like helping them with money or cleaning their house, something like that. So a lot of those types of ministries can go to a whole bunch of different needs. And I'm just only covering a few, but, you know, you can find people that need help um, and do that. Another one that I thought of because I have a good friend who has um, a handicapped child and she needs a lot of care and they just, they need respite care. And trying to find somebody, even in the world, who's willing to do it for pay is almost impossible. And they're just totally burned out because they are, you know, 24 seven having to deal with her physical issues. And it's, that's another type of person that could definitely use some, um, some love from the body. Um, and then moving on to another kind of topic in there is rejoice with them that rejoice. Some of the things that stood out to me there is helping with different things like weddings and baby showers, graduations, um, any other times of rejoicing, just 
being an extra pair of hands or whatever is needed there. Uh, weep with them that weep. That can go along with some of the things we talked about in the other section. Um, another thing about this is long after that you think they should be done with their mourning, <laughs> they're not. And they still need you. And they still need that care and that love. So even just a card in the mail or giving them a meal can mean a lot. We have a friend who lost her baby in about a year, I think. Sorry. And there was a, another young lady at our church who every week she would go and just clean her house, clean out her refrigerator, and it means a lot. Another way is hospitality, which is pretty much a lost art these days. Uh, people don't have people over very often anymore. But opening up your home and inviting people into your home is just a real ministry to people. And I know large families especially don't, don't get asked over to somebody's house very often, you know. <laughs> when you're a newly married couple, it's pretty easy to just have a couple over, you know, or a single person over. But once they have, you know, four or five, six, seven kids, <laughs> nobody wants to cook for you anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's, um, and that's obviously not the only way to open up your home. But Bible studies in your home, um, opening your home to people that are traveling, whether that's family or missionaries. Um, Ministering to your neighbors. A lot of times people forget about their neighbors, and whether they're saved or not saved, they need to see God's love from you too. Praying for others, continuing instant in prayer, and pray without ceasing, we're told that so often in the scriptures. And there's so many people that you can pray for, whether it's people that are suffering, the people that are lost, other saints. I guess lost people and saints, that covers everybody. <laughs> but... Um, and then communicating, too. Telling people, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but um, in Paul's epistles, he told people that he was praying for them 13 times. And telling people that you're praying for them, telling them what you're praying for for them, um, really means a lot to know that someone is praying for you. Um, communicating isn't always an easy thing to do for everybody. Um, but you can encourage people with edifying messages, whether it's through mail or the phone or email, text, social media. I don't know. We have like a thousand ways to communicate these days. Um, but it makes sometimes that overwhelming abundance of communication ability can make it difficult to have meaningful conversations with people. Um, so just working towards that. A uh, couple like, unique ways that I've seen. I have a friend on Facebook who she goes through her friends list every day and she chooses she prays for 20 to 30 of those people each day and then she sends them a message that just says I'm praying for you you know and she she goes through each person's Facebook page and sees if there's anything specific that they need prayer for and everything I thought wow that's that's a neat ministry that you know you might not think of um, and then like my mom sending out people encouraging cards and little cards with scripture, scriptures on them and stuff and um, just a couple different ways um, and then, again, supporting the grieving, the wounded, the sick with communicating to them. Um, and in addition to those uh, things like mail, just communicating face-to-face -face with people. That's something that we don't, we kind of lose in our technological age. <laughs> we, we forget that that one-on-one -on -one connection, that face-to-face -face can be really important too. And that, you know, that goes along with hospitality, but it can be outside the home, too. And then um, my sister brought this one up when I was talking to her, but making sure that people know that you are available and accessible, that you are open for them to talk to you, that they can call you, that they can text you, that you're willing to make the time for them. Um, and it takes work, you know, to have good relationships, um, but just keeping that 
communication line open. Another one that was mentioned in some of these verses, but it's like I such a huge topic, I'm not going to cover it very much, but is suffering and the ministry of someone who suffers. It doesn't sound like, well, how's that a ministry? But there actually is, there is some amount of ministry in that. Um, it's a good work. God talks about it as a good work. It's suffering for him and just suffering in patience. Um, you know, all of us are going to suffer some amount. Some people suffer a lot more than other people. Um, but bearing it patiently and choosing to be joyful and choosing to praise God, even when you're going through really hard things, it brings glory to God. And that's, you know, that's our purpose here is to bring him glory. So um, another one in there is raising your children. And for some period of your life, if you have children, that's your whole ministry. <laughs> <laughs> it can be for many years. That's 99% of your ministry is raising those children and serving your husband. Um, so I think I felt when I was putting this together, I felt like um, a lot of people, especially in Christian circles, tend to elevate the, Christ, the, wife, the Christian wife and mother as like the goal. You know, this is women's ministry is to be married and have kids. And while that is a huge ministry, that's not, I mean, I've gone through a few things already. That's not the extent of, of ministry, but it is a huge ministry, and that's why there's so much focus on it, you know, and it takes a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, see, mommy can't even listen because she's having to take care of me. <laughs> no. But anyway, um, and then serving your husband. Um, some of Proverbs 31 goes through some of this, but it says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he have, may have no need of spoil. And we are to do him good and not evil all the days of his life, which includes before you even know him. You know, um, I think it's, it's really important that you're keeping God, first of all, in mind, but also your future husband in the way that you live your life, that you're not going to re have regrets when you have a husband that you wish you wouldn't have done things beforehand. Um, so I want to hear from you guys what some of the ways you think of that you can love and serve your husband. Yep, <laughs> you got it. <laughs>
person. <laughs> you know, um, it's it's been rough on many families. And mm-hmm. even though I was the the worker in the family, Bill had the pastoral position, but he lost his job, not the pastoral job. He lost his other job because it was closed. Mm-hmm. It was shut down. So it's like so then you you're working on that. So now that's when he started picking up some of the lights in the home, and I'm like, thank you, darling. <laughs> Well, and you're a team. Yes. Yeah. You can divide it up how you decide. Right. <laughs> And it probably helps our minds, too. You know, it solidifies it in ourselves. We're not just assuming that, well, he should do that, you know, but making sure that we're actually valuing what he's done for us. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So serving your husband, that could be a lot of different uh, different things. Um, And one thing that we can do both as wives and as 
future wives or potential future wives um, is keeping our minds and our hearts pure for our husband. Um, I know a lot of people, they talk about staying pure till marriage. It's like, well, no, you still need to be pure after marriage. It just is, you know, it looks different. But, you know, I mean, you hear that all the time. And it's like, no, purity isn't something that ends when you get married. Um, it's Right, yeah, ex- exactly. So a um, couple things that I was thinking about that are threats to that, um, things like romance movies and books that get your mind going down a path that's not healthy. Um, I've heard people call romance novels um, to women, they're what pornography is to men, you know, in a, the way it stirs women up, similar. Um, and it's, it's something that, you know, we want to keep our minds pure. Um, music that does the same thing, <laughs> bringing your mind down the wrong way. Um, and I mean, pornography is not only a male problem either, there are women with issues with that too. Um, so just guarding our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears um, for God and for our husbands or our future husband. Um, another thing is, is friends that encourage you in being flirtatious. Um, oh, you like so-and-so, you know? Um, and it's like, that's not your goal in life, you know, whether you're married or single, and just keeping that so that the heart of your husband may safely trust in you um, and doing him good and not evil all the days of your life. Um, another aspect of ministry that women can do, particularly in Titus, it talks about it. Um, I think it's First Timothy does too, but just discipling those younger women and girls, taking you know, that can take a lot of different forms. Um, just taking a young girl under your wing that needs some guidance um, and care, maybe a little direction. Um, The Mally's Bright Lights group um, is a really good example of this. Um, Sarah, do you want to just explain a little bit for people that might not be familiar with it what Bright Lights is? Another one would be helping a young mom who's learning to navigate pregnancy, birth, child caring, all of those sort of things, being there um, to help share things that you've learned. Um, and, you know, obviously don't go up to a pregnant mom and tell her everything she needs to do. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there is a lot of knowledge. I mean, this group here with all the ladies that have had children here, there's a lot of information that we can share with each other that I found that this was really helpful, you know. Um, and then it's up to them whether they think that would work for them or not. Um, but being, being there for, for um, younger ladies. Uh, and then same kind of thing for somebody who's learning to homeschool for the first time. That can be a hugely daunting task. It can be scary. It can be intimidating. And for a mom who's done it, for years to be able to say, well, here are some things that I found really helped me, <laughs> you know, um, lots of different things she could say. But anyway, um, that would be another way. Another thing is passing on curriculum. You know, a lot of times young families don't have a lot of money. And so when somebody who's done with a certain book says, hey, would you like my, you know, Saxon math book? It's, it's a huge blessing if somebody, when somebody does that. Um, same thing with child training. All these different things, it's, it's not something you go and you, you know, beat somebody over the head with your knowledge, but being there to share things that you've learned um, with younger women. 
another one that was in um, was that in Titus? No, can't remember what passage we read. But anyway, <laughs> it was alms deeds. Does anybody have a definition for the word alms deeds? Alms deeds. It's basically just helping the poor. You know, I mean, we think of giving alms or something as giving money to the poor. Um, and that's definitely one thing is giving money to people who are poor, clothes, your used curriculum, um, <laughs> different acts of service, helping them out with things. Um, and I had this example that I wanted to read about. It was um, something that a neighbor did for her other neighbor. And her kid came up to her and she said, Mom, why are you asking the neighbor to borrow some salt? We have plenty of salt. And she says, uh, because they are poor and it is something that they can easily share with us and makes them feel that they are able to give to us and will feel more willing to ask us when they need something. And I just thought, wow, who would have thought, you know, to do that? But it's, it's a really neat, um, just kind of a neat thought of helping someone else. But, um, and that kind of leads to something I alluded to earlier, but letting someone minister to you can be really hard. It can be humbling. Um, but letting someone minister to you is ministering to them, <laughs> which sounds kind of funny, but um, sometimes you need to just allow people to help you. Um, and that can be hard sometimes <laughs> to let somebody help you. Um, then there's sharing the gospel with people. Um, you know, that's not only something that men are supposed to do, but we can do that too. Um, and sharing about right division too, like Priscilla showing up with her husband, showing Apollo the way more perfectly, helping him understand what he, you know, he had this knowledge and he was on fire about it, but they were like, well, here, let me show you a little bit more <laughs> and you can understand this better. Um, so teaching different, helping different people, whether that's your neighbors, um, you know, going out, uh, in public, handing out tracts, um, bringing it up in your conversations with people. I feel like my husband excels at that, and I stink at that. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn, but it's still difficult for me. Um, social media is another good way to do that. Um, the most common way people probably think of is, min is missionary work, you know, whether that's full-time missions or just going on a missions trip. Um, we have a friend who she goes, I think it's three months out of the year to Ecuador and helps people there and shares the gospel with them and brings Bibles to them and stuff. And then the rest of the nine months, she's back in the States earning money so that she can do that. Um, she's a single, I don't know how old she is, like 40, 50 maybe, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, she doesn't have a, a family to take care of and that's her, her ministry. She works so she can minister for three months out of the year. So that was kind of neat. And then examples in history like Amy Carmichael and stuff like that. So, um, another one in Proverbs 31, 13 through 19. Um, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. And that just kind of brings to mind the being diligent in your work, whether that's at home or in a workplace, just being diligent, working for God. You know, that can be... A good work too. Um, and then in Titus and Timothy it talks about like a list of things that women are to be. I mean it's and how to teach the younger women to be these things. So it talks about how to be sober, to love your husbands, love your children, to be discreet, to be chaste, keepers at home, good obedient to your own husband. Um, and another thing that I was kind of thinking about recently is that serving other people can be a really good way to learn those things. Um, and especially for 
young ladies who are done with school or close to done with school and before they get married, that's a really good time to learn and practice a lot of these things. Because if you, I mean, sure, you can get married and learn these things, but sometimes it's easier <laughs> if you can make the mistakes before you're married. Um, and <laughs> get some of the, <laughs> the kinks out there. But, um, but it really does. Like, our society tells you when you're 18, you move out, and you're on your own. You're supposed to be independent. Um, and, you know, for some people, that's the way it has to be. But I think God puts us in a family where we can learn these things. We can learn and practice submitting ourselves one to another in a, and learn team effort, teamwork that you need in a marriage to make a marriage function properly. Like we were talking about, you have to be able to work together. You have to be able to serve one another and not be, well, that's his job. I'm not going to fix the sink because that's a guy's job or whatever. Or I've asked him 10 times, you know. Um, but just learning that at home before you get married is easier than when you are married and then have to learn it. Um, and it's, it's kind of God's pattern is to learn to submit yourselves one to another with everyone. I mean, it's not just in a husband-wife relationship or just in a family relationship. That's in the body of Christ. So um, learning some of those things. But if you're forced to or want to just be independent and live for yourself, it's a lot harder than to go from that lifestyle into a marriage than it is to go from a family where you're working together into a marriage relationship. At least that's what I've seen in, <laughs> in, in different families. Um, and then a couple verses that go to what I talked about earlier, that it's different depending on what time in life you're at. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 7. I promise I'm almost done. Okay, let's start in verse 8. We'll just kind of pick a few verses out here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Um, and then we'll jump down to verse 17. But as God hath distributed to every man... As the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. And then we look over to verse 34. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Which kind of goes back to when you're married and you have little children, that's kind of all you can do <laughs> sometimes, um, you know, keeping them clothed and fed and uh, somewhat clean is <laughs> kind of all you can do. Um, so I don't want anybody to feel guilty like, oh, I can't do that. All those things that you listed, I can't do a lot of that stuff. Um, but he doesn't expect you to do everything at once. He wants you to do, like I said in verse 17, as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord call, hath called every one, so let him walk. So you know what God puts in your path, what God has that you can do, do that, you know, and do it with your might. Um, and it is a good chance for those of you that are unmarried to do some of these things that the ones with little ones can't do. You know, you can do things that they might not be able to do. You can help different people that otherwise would be not helped. Um, so yeah, I guess your ministry will just change as your, your position in life changes. But, um, and to close, let's go to two verses. Matthew, I mean, yeah, Matthew Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Which kind of goes back to one of our whys, why we do these things in the first place. It's not for us or so that people see us and think, oh, she's so wonderful for doing these things. Um, but to glorify God. 
And then Romans 13, 10 through 14. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us, therefore, cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. What was the reference on that number again? Um, Romans thirteen ten through 14. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have a song we could sing together to close out here?